Hello YouTube, I've got a really fun tie ready for you today. It's a CDC dry fly, one that I have been asked to tie for our national team, for the Lithuanian national team heading into the world championships in Spain. It's, I really don't even get, have a name for the fly. I've just been given a picture for reference and I've tied this fly. And it really seemed to work well, both in the waters here in Lithuania as well as the world championships. It is a quick fly to tie, it only takes a few minutes once you get the hang of it. However, it is really effective, it is buoyant and it is visible, which is especially important when you're fishing these tiny dry flies in sizes 18, 20, 22. To be able to see it is, is really key. So, I hope you enjoy it. I also hope you've been enjoying the videos in English that we've been putting out lately. There's plenty more to come and just to let us know that you've been liking them. Please do subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave the comment down below if you have any questions or anything you want to say, and let's just jump right into it. I will start tying the fly with a bright orange thread, which is going to be only used as a tag towards the butt end of the fly. However, I started at the very close to the eye of the, of the hook just to make sure that the entirety of the body remains the same. There's no bumps or, or any uneven parts on the body. And I'll really wind it down to as far as I feel comfortable. And moving back and forth form a little tag of thread at the bend of the hook. Move the thread back to the front. That's really all we need of the orange thread in this fly. Whip finish to secure it and snip it off with your scissors. Now I'll switch to a black tying thread Start it once again close to the eye of the hook and move the thread in as close to touching turns as you can towards the tag that you formed. If you did leave any spaces for now, don't worry about it. You can always move your thread and cover up any orange spaces that have been left. For now, just leave a little orange tag at the bend of the hook and once again, as close as you can get to touching turns, move the thread back to just behind the eye of the hook, leaving a couple of millimeters of room there. Now what I'm going to be tying next is just a strand of Unifloss in hot orange and this will act as an indicator so it really helps with the visibility of the fly especially once you get down to the 18s and the 20s in size. Uh, tie it in with a pinch and loop, pull it in close to the thread and tie it off securely and leave it hanging for now. Now for the wings what I'm going to be using are just a couple of CDC feathers Take these feathers and match their tips together. Pluck off any of the fuzzy fibers at the very bottom of the feather. And, and really you can use as many feathers as you like or as few feathers as you like for this fly. I'm using two on a size 14 because I only intend to use it as just a dry fly. However, if you really want to use it as something like in a dry dropper system, you can put four CDC feathers on and with a good enough floatant it can hold up a small, small light nymph. When it comes to sizes smaller than the 14, I'll usually use one CDC feather. In some cases I'll use two still on a size 16. But right now I'm tying a size 14, pretty much as big as I ever tie this fly. Before tying in the CDC feathers, what you're going to want to do is to clip off the butt ends to where you're already tying in the stem with some of the fibers. 
so you don't need the bare butt ends. And once again, pinch and loop method, tie the two feathers on top of the hook and tie them off securely. Now this next method of tying the wing uh, was quite unique for me. It's really an interesting way. It's not the, the usual way that you would tie on a CDC wing. However, it is quick, simple, and really it makes for a nice wing that is not perfect, not perfectly even. It's just a fuzzy kind of a mess that really, really tends to attract the fish more in some cases than it does the fisherman. So it doesn't really look neat, but it floats really well and it really looks lively. And it's just an interesting way, another way of using a CDC feather for forming the wing. So what you're going to want to do is to take this feather, both of the feathers by the tip ends, and they do slip sometimes, but to take them by the tip ends. At this point you can switch to a hackle plier, but I'm gonna stay, keep holding it in my fingers. And then brush as many of the fibers back as you can. Hold it back like this. So once again, brush it and brush it back over the body of the fly. And while holding it in position, make a few turns of thread to secure it in place. At this point, you can cut the tag ends of the feathers off. and make a few more turns of thread in order to truly secure it. Clean it up somewhat as well. Now what you're gonna want to do next is to split what you have of the wing roughly in half and bend the strand of unifloss that you previously tied in over the top forming something like a wing case in this case. Fold it over the top, pinch it with your fingers and tie it off at the front of the hook like, like so. So what this has done is it has split the wings into two so forming pretty much like an up wing, a mayfly imitation wing that's splits into two, although this fly really works as an emerger. But if you watch closely at the emerging mayfly, right before it puts its wings into an upright position, it also has this, its wings spread up slightly, so it's really a perfect imitation of, a, of an emerger. That's gonna ride slightly submerged in the water with only the wings poking out and the wings being split in a V position, much like an emerging mayfly would. So what you're gonna do next is bend this whole tag backwards, back over the body, and make turns with your thread, securing it in place like that. And now once that is done, snip it off, leaving a few millimeters of a tag hanging out. What this does, is it really, really improves the visibility of the fly. So even something like a size 20 is clearly visible in pretty much any weather conditions. It's just really, I haven't found anything that works better as a tag for small dry flies. So just once that's secured in place, all you really need to do is whip finish the fly Four or five turn whip finish. Pull it in tight. And you will notice that the wing looks quite long. In this case you would be correct. Because I do want to shorten the, the wing. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling all of these fibers up. And I want the wing to not really extend much further than the back of the hook. So once I pull it all together, I've got that measure in my mind and I'm going to be plucking the CDC 
I really pl prefer plucking it in this case rather than cutting it because cutting it gives it a clear edge rather than something scruffy which is some in longer in some places and shorter in others which is in my opinion more natural and this just gives a beautiful natural CDC wing and you finish off the fly by simply adding a little bit of varnish over the eye uh, over the head of the fly letting it dry just gives it a little bit more durability and now at the water side treat it with some floatants and it's going to be riding up in that water for a really long time a really good buoyant fly that works all year round and it's really a simple quick way to tie a fly that's going to be catching you plenty of fish thanks for watching once again i hope that you have been enjoying the videos that we've been putting out in english it would mean a lot to us if you were to subscribe to the channel and like the video even share it if you think that it's useful and you want some more people to see it that would help the channel a lot and that would also keep us motivated to keep on popping up with more videos and as for this fly i really really do hope some of you guys tie it up because it's well worth having in your box in fact i don't think i'm going out fishing without it next season